following program is rebroadcast by the Armed Forces Radio Service to our fighting men overseas. Goodyear presents the Roy Rogers Show. You'll be hearing Bob Nolan and the Sons of the Pioneers, Pat Friday, the Far Brothers, Perry Botkin's Orchestra, and now the greatest name in rubber, Goodyear, invite you to meet America's greatest Western star, Roy Rogers. <laughs> well, howdy, folks, and we're all mighty glad you're here with us again tonight for another Goodyear get-together with a song or two and, of course, a frontier yarn that I hope you'll all like. Roy, remember last week when you told that yarn about the Russian kid? You said there were a dozen or more frontier Robin Hoods. I sure do, Pat. Why? Well, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman, but the idea of a gay, dashing Robin Hood stirs my imagination. And since you said there were more than a dozen of them in the early days, well, I was wondering if you might tell a story of another of those almost legendary characters tonight. Pat, it's a pleasure to indulge a woman's curiosity. So let's tell a story tonight about, well, about California's Robin Hood character, Joaquin Murrieta. Hmm, Joaquin Murrieta. Even the name has a romantic ring to it. Listen to her. Swooning again. <laughs> well, actually, how you felt about Murrieta, if you lived in the days of the gold rush, uh, depended on who you were, Pat. On, uh, on who you were? Yeah, if you were uh, an American who'd come in to make your fortune quickly with a gold claim, Murrieta was probably a desperate and reckless bandit to you, but if you were a Mexican or a California Spaniard, Joaquin was sort of an avenging knight in armor. You mean he actually wore armor, Roy? No, he wore clothes like anyone else, Pat, except they weren't just like anybody else's. He wore silks and satins and embroidered shirts and really cut quite a figure. You see, Murrieta was cut out to be a leader. He was an expert shot and at ten paces, at ten paces rather, <laughs> could throw a knife right through the center of a, of a nace of diamonds. He dressed like an actor and, well, maybe he was an actor at heart because many of his escapes were, were made possible, by, possible because of his skill at disguise. Like the day when a crowd of people were standing around a sheriff's poster. $5,000 reward offered by the citizens of Stockton to anyone who delivers Joaquin Murrieta dead or alive. Suddenly, a well-dressed Mexican who had pushed his way through the crowd turned to a neighbor and said, Pardon, senor. Perhaps you have a pencil I could borrow, eh? Sure. Here you are, Pedro. Gracias. Well, the Mexican wrote something on the bottom of the handbill, then strode off, mounted, and rode away. Just as his horse broke into a starting trot, some men crowded in closer to the uh, billboard to see what he'd written. Suffering catfish, look at that. Look what it says. I will add $10,000 to this reward, and it's signed Joaquin Murrieta. Well, how about that? Well, it wasn't too long after that that a doctor in a little town of San Leandres had a caller one afternoon. Say, a friend of yours is sick? Si, si, senor. He wish I bring you to him. Well, where is this man located? Oh, he's out in back country. You come with me. I, I bring an extra horse. I, I show you where he is. Well, what's wrong with him? Stomach bad? Running a fever? Oh, no, sabe, senor. Pero he look like, he look like maybe he'd die. Well, I guess there's no use wasting time here. Uh, wait till I fetch my bag and I'll ride with you. Si, senor, doctor. And when you ride with me, you wear blindfold. <laughs> Half hour later, the doctor's blindfold was removed, and he found himself in a cave high up in the mountains. There before him, stretched out on a hard rock floor, was walking Murrieta. Murrieta was conscious. He smiled charmingly up at the doctor. Ah, oh, senor, it was good of you to come. Murrieta, you might as well know now that I didn't come because I was threatened by this owl hoot of yours. I came because I understood a man was dying. Oh, see, see, to be sure, you are a physician. You have made an oath to care for the dying and the sick... But, senor doctor, let us not waste time. I have already lost much blood. Here, here is the wound. Hmm. Yeah. I see. Senor doctor, your, your face, you look sad. Is it that I am not going to live? I don't know, Mariella. Well, I'll dress the wounds. Your chances of recovery after that are about 50 out of 100. Three days from now, well, you should know if you're going to live or... Three days, eh? Well, we'll make you as comfortable as possible for that time, senor. Wait. Hey, do you think I'm going to stay here for three days? Si. This knife fulfilled my obligation as a physician. I've attended you. 
Besides, I have other patients. Many of them are sick as you Sit are. Sit down, I, senor I, doctor. I, I, you might as well. You are not leaving this cave until we find out that I shall live or <laughs> that I am dead. Venga, moto, bring the doctor some wine. Apparently, the plight of the doctor's other patients preyed on Murrieta's mind or conscience. And after he was bandaged, he opened his eyes, smiled until the wince of pain was gone from his face, and spoke again. Senor doctor, I have made a decision. Yeah, what now? I am only one life. You have many patients. If I live, I live. If not, we know you have done as good as you know how. My men will take you back. Well, your, your dressing should be changed, looked at. I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Marietta. See? Si. You have your man meet me at the waterfall tomorrow at uh, four, and I'll be back. You shall be back alone, senor, or tal vez there shall be a posse with you, eh? Look, Marietta, I'm here as a physician, not as an informer. You're a bandit, all right, but you're still a patient. What? If I recover, then I'm no longer a patient. What happened then, senor doctor? Then, young man, I shall do my duty as a citizen and report your whereabouts. <laughs> si, si, I believe you, senor, but Mioretti is strong. He shall recover fast. In fact, you shall see. I will meet you personally at the waterfall tomorrow. Well, the next afternoon, shortly before four, the good doctor rode up toward the waterfall. As he approached, he noticed a young boy, a lad of possibly 13 or 14, sitting nearby. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! 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 Easy, boy. Easy. Easy. Oh, hello, son. Are you the only one here? See, si, see, si, they sent me to take you back to cave. Yeah, I should have expected that. Marietta said he'd meet me at the waterfall. Joaquin Marietta never break promise, senor. Oh, no? Then why did he send you instead of coming himself? Senor, Joaquin never break promise in whole life. But uh, perhaps you need eyeglasses, senor doctor. <laughs> Grief. Marietta, what were you doing disguised? Well, you say you return alone. So to find out, Marietta must make very sure. If you bring posse... Well, senor, they not recognize me better than you. Yeah, from the sound of you, you must have passed the crisis and be on the road to recovery. Oh, see, it is like I tell you, I am almost well. In that case, Marietta, I shall change the dressing, give you until 10 tomorrow morning to be out of here. At 10 o'clock, I'm reporting your whereabouts to the sheriff. When the doctor got home that night... He rode into his yard. He, he, he noticed an old man, a Mexican, half sitting, half leaning against his porch. A huge battered sombrero was perched on top of his tangled gray hair. And a brown cigarette, long since gone out, dangled from his lips. Uh, are you waiting for me? Say, say, doctor, I wish news of Marietta. Marietta? How did you know I was treating him? Oh, I know, senor. Is he well? Yes, only too well. Well, bueno. then, uh, senor doctor, you take this. Take money from you? No, no, thanks, just the same. Oh, pero, senor, it is all right. You, you do work. Why should you pay? Marietta didn't even offer to. Oh, but my dinero is so good as his, senor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Keep your money. Hey, by the way, why are you so interested in Murrieta? Oh, walk in. He is, uh, how you call him? Uh, he is nephew to me. Oh, well, well, I'm much obliged anyhow. Your nephew as well, and you hang on to your dinero. Well, good night, senor. Boy, that's not just senor, doctor. Hasta la vista. Next morning, shortly after nine, the doctor left his house and headed for town in the sheriff's office. By the time he got there, it would be almost ten. Time to give the word that Murrieta's hideout had been found. He tied his horse at the hitching rail and stepped up onto the board walk, and as he headed for the sheriff's office, he noticed the same old Mexican... This time, leaning against the frame of an empty doorway. Well, yes, yes, senor. What are you doing here? Uh, senor, you will not accept money. Por favor, it, it makes me feel better. Look, now, we've been all over that before. You keep your money. Oh, but Joaquin, you know it to you, senor, doctor. All right, all right. Then let Joaquin give it to me. Bueno. All right, doctor. Joaquin what? gives it to you here. <laughs> well, I'll be jiggered. Marietta, another disguise. Then that was you at my house last night. Oh, well, see, I have been to your house all night. All night? See. <laughs> what in mercy's name for? Well, doctor, you say you do not tell sheriff until 10 o'clock this morning. 
Murietta, he must be sure. And you have the gall to come to town, stand right out here on the street, two doors from the sheriff's office? Murietta, he must be sure. Well, this time you overplayed your hand. I'm going in and report you right now, before you can get out of town. <laughs> but, senor, you give me word you do not tell Sheriff for it before 10 o'clock. It is still four minutes away. Now, if you wish to break word, you go right ahead, but... What are you going to tell Sheriff Joaquin look like, huh? Old man, small boy, maybe even fox, eh? <laughs> he not ever know what to look for, senor doctor. Get <laughs> up, vamos. Adios, senor doctor. And Muriel will never forget you. 